Hi again, Mark here from TalkingBass.net. This week I'm going to be breaking down the cool slap riff from the instrumental tune 43 by level 42. This is a Mark King classic and it's one of my all time favourite slap riffs. It's fairly tricky to get under the fingers, but once you have the moves down, it's really fun to play. Remember to check out TalkingBass.net for over a hundred other bass lessons and subscribe for free to gain access to a load of different bass practice resources including the Scale Reference Guide ebook. If you visit the lesson map, the videos are all systemized and categorized for ease of navigation and there's sheet music and tab available to download for most of them from uh, each page below the video, so uh, go check it out. Okay, so first of all, let's just have a listen to the riff played along with the backing track. So this is a four bar riff, pretty much in E minor, and it's split into two equal parts of two bars each. And I'm going to address each of those parts separately. So the first part goes like this. Then the second part sounds like this. So you want to address both of those separately. Now, for every single repeat after that, we also have this that, that little lick at the beginning. So uh, I'll be looking at that separately as well. So we're going to be looking at this in two separate parts. So let's have a look at this first part and we'll begin with just the opening lick, the first three notes that sound like this. Okay. Now the notes there, we have open E, D seventh fret of the G string, which is popped and then back to the open E. So we're slapping those open E's. So open E, D, pop, and then slap on the open E. So the notes there, there's nothing to that really, just those three notes, dead simple. But I've seen this played several different ways, okay? Now I'm gonna show you all three different ways that you can use. Now, the original sounds a little more like this. So we're getting more of the full duration of the E. Okay, so there's not really any little mutes or ghost notes in there. Okay, so that's one way to play it. I personally don't use that very often, but that's kind of how it sounds on the original. The other way, which is what I'm probably more likely to use, is bring the hand down, so we've got that, and play a ghost note, so we have. Okay, so I'm slapping the ghost note there. So I'm bringing that hand down lightly there, slap it, and then pop. Now the other way you can play it, the third way, is to play it like this. So by doing this we've got more of this kind of percussive kind of drum action with the hands, which I think Mark King is more likely to use live. So for this we have open E, then we bring the hand down, then we slap that ghost note, so which is a really, really popular move in slap lines. Then we pop the D. So we've got a constant 16th note rhythm uh, uh, going there, so. Okay, and then we can come back down for the E. Okay, so all together, very slowly, Okay, so it's worth practicing that. That's that kind of move. You get it played very quick on some slap lines. On this one, not so quick. Okay, so on the original, if you were to listen to the original recording, it sounds more like this. But live, I think Mark King's more likely to play. Okay, because it keeps that kind of uh, incessant kind of 16th note rhythm working, okay? So you just need to practice that move first. Now, the next lick sounds like this. Okay? 
So this is a little bit of an odd one, and I've seen this played so many different ways uh, on YouTube covers, things like that. So the way that I'm playing it here is the way that I transcribed it originally, and I slowed this thing down and listened to everything going by, and this is what I came up with. This is what it seems to be. But I have seen different people play it in different ways. So, uh, you know, learn it this way, and then have a look at how everybody else plays it, you know, have a listen to it, see what you think. But I'm pretty sure this is what it is, okay? So, we begin with a 10th interval, okay? So we've got a G, uh, third fret of the E string, which we slap, and then we pop the B, fourth fret of the G string, okay? And we let those two ring out. So this is a really, really popular slapped uh, double stop or chord. You know, you get that. You get that all the time, especially with Mark King lines. So, you just let that ring out. I've got the first finger and the fourth finger there. Then we slide it up one fret. Okay, the whole thing. Okay. Then we slap the E string again, which we're now on the fourth fret with the first finger there. And then we slide up again to the A at the fifth fret, okay? So the whole thing just slides up one fret each time. So practice that really slowly and make sure, you know, it's quite hard on your fingers if your finger strength's not up to it, but. And it's quite tricky to get the coordination between the slaps and the slides. But, uh, you know, once you've got the muscle memory uh, working, you know, and you've kind of got it on autopilot, it becomes a lot, lot easier, so. So start off slow. And uh, bear in mind uh, the rhythm, so three, four, Okay, and just get used to that. Now the next part of the lick has three muted notes or ghost notes that sound like this. Okay, so the first one we're actually slapping. So we've got the hand rested there on the string. So yeah, there's the ghost note. Then we pop a ghost note, although I'll come back to this, uh, come back to this in a second. So we're gonna pop this on the D string. Okay, so we've that's all it is, slap, pop, E string, D string, and the hand at this point is roughly over the fifth fret. And then we use the hammer on palm slap. And if you don't know anything about that, you know, even though I've mentioned it earlier on in this uh, lesson, I do have a lesson devoted to that uh, over at YouTube or over at talkingbass.net. I call it the, uh, the muted palm slap because <laughs> nobody's really come up with a name for it, but basically we're talking about this kind of flappy hand action. So, Okay, so that's what we've got. So we've got three ghost notes, but they're all played differently. Slap, pop, muted palm slap. Now, it is possible to play this with the G there at the fifth fret of the D string. And often, it can actually be easier to do it that way to begin with. If you listen to the original, it's pretty much a muted note, I mean a ghost note in there. But if you listen closely, you can hear a little bit of the pitch on there. So I think he's actually almost fretting it, but it's so quick and so, so you know, in between with the notes that it pretty much comes through as a ghost note. But, but you can play it, it's perfectly okay to play it with the G there. So, let's join that up with the, uh, with the first part of the lick. So we had... Okay, so that's what we end up with. So, very, very slowly. So that's with the actual G there. Like I say, it's much easier to turn that into a ghost note on the D string when you play it at full speed. Okay, so just try getting used to that move, and that's pretty much the toughest part of this whole uh, this whole riff. So you know, if you're thinking, "Oh, that seems quite tough," or oh, "I can't wait to get onto the next part of the riff," don't uh, don't worry. Once you've got through that part, the rest of it's quite easy. Okay, so build up speed. You know, see there, I changed it into a ghost note. Okay. 
So, now let's put those two licks together. So, at full speed, it'll sound like this. Two, three, four. Okay, so let's slow it right down and then just build up speed gradually. So, uh, at a slower tempo, three and four and. Okay, three and four and. Okay, and you just work around it at that tempo. So then a little quicker, three and four and. Three and four and. And if you have any problems getting to that tempo, just take it back to a slower tempo. Okay, so a little quicker. Three and four and. Again, three and four and. Okay. So the final lick in this part sounds like this. Okay, so we begin with an octave pattern on the G here. So we've got the third fret of the E string and the fifth fret of the D string. And we have a ghost note between the two. So that sounds like this. And this is a really, really common slap pattern. So it's, it's worth learning this really well. So you can see there that I've got the fingers in a pretty flat position, you know, holding down that octave pattern. I'm, well, I'm not holding the notes down yet, but I'm just in a, a nice home position where I've got the fingers rested lightly there. Then all I have to do for the uh, G down here is I just lift, the, uh, raise these fingers and slap. Then the fingers come back to the starting position for the ghost note. And then the fourth finger there is hovering over that fifth fret, ready for the pop of the octave. So the fingers are hardly moving, you can see there. And that's really um, a really useful pattern to learn. You know, you might have heard it in loads of different slap lines, so it's worth moving it around. You know, just getting used to that, uh, that slap pop pattern there. So start, uh, start slow. and just build up speed. Oops. Okay, so just keep working up until you get it up to speed. After that octave pattern, we've got two little 16th note ghost notes in there. So that sounds like this. So we just bring the hand back down, you know, rest it lightly and then just slap those two ghost notes. Okay, then we have a hammer on from the G to the A, okay? So slap the G and then hammer on to the A. So that sounds like this. Okay, then we've got two more ghost notes. Okay, so it's worth practicing that move round and round and round, and I'm going to show you a variation on this just afterwards that, uh, that makes things actually a little bit easier, but on the original, you do only hear those two ghost notes after the hammer-on. Okay, so that's just worth bearing in mind. So after, the, after those two ghost notes, we then move up to, to play this pop. Now you can do this one of two ways, you can either hammer on from the G to the A, or we can just go straight for the A. But let's say that we use the hammer on. We uh, pop the G there at the fifth fret of the D string, then hammer on to the A seventh fret of the D string. And it's just a little grace note there. It's just, you know, we're not going, you know, it's just, just to lead into it. And then we uh, come back to the G, fifth fret of the D string. And so we've got two pops there. Okay, so I'm putting a little bit of a shake there as well, a little bit of vibrato in. So, when we add that to the uh, lick, we have this.
Now, the variation that I mentioned is to use four ghost notes in there instead of two, just before that pop. And that would sound like this. So the first one that we looked at was... So there's a little gap in there, a little eighth note gap before, before we do the pop. But with all four ghost notes... And it helps to just keep that 16th note rhythm running, and I, that's how I play it. You know, I, I don't like having that little gap in there, it feels awkward to me. Um, so to keep that nice 16th note driving rhythm going, it works really well. And it seems to set it up quite well, you know, for going into the, uh, into the pop there. Now, uh, in terms of the hand, the left hand, the fretting hand, uh, watch where that goes when I do the ghost notes. So I'm actually moving the hand up into position for the pop as soon as I've done the hammer on down there. So, see the hand moves up. So that just helps with keeping, you know, get, getting into position ready for that because otherwise we're going to be down here and then we're going to have to do this big jump. So that, that's always worth... Um, uh, mentioning for anything that you play really if you've got a move to make it's worth making the move early especially if you've got ghost notes in there you know if, if you've got something like a gap um, you know of silence like a rest or you've got some ghost notes get into position during that uh, you know during that pause because uh, you know you don't want to be jumping at the point at which you're going to be playing okay so again So that's all the licks there for the first part, so now we just need to put them together. So if we put them all together, it sounds like this. So you can hear there that I used the four uh, ghost notes in there. So you want to play it slowly. Don't worry about playing it round and round and round in a loop because we're going to be adding the second part. And if you play it round in a loop, it can uh, kind of throw you when you have to add the second part on. So have a pause after you've played it. So that would be like this. Three and four and... And then just stop. Because if you get used to going back into the same riff, like I say, it will seem a little bit difficult to uh, go into the second part. And uh, don't worry about the amount of time it takes you to nail this. Start slow and then just gradually build up. But when I first started playing this, I remember learning this and it just took me forever. Because I, I just wasn't used to some of the moves that are in there. Because it's quite an odd riff in some ways. And uh, if you're used to playing a lot of Mark King things, then it'll probably seem a lot easier than it does to some other people. Because you'll be used to some of these moves but uh, it took me forever and um, I just couldn't get the coordination right and just couldn't you know it just seemed tough so um, I just played it round and round slowly and then eventually when you know it started getting you know up to speed it felt great because you know it's got that you know it's like a train you know those uh, consistent 16th notes it feels great when you actually get it up to speed so start slow and then just build up so um, let's try it a little bit quicker Two and three and four and. And you'll notice that again, I'm using those four ghost notes in there. Like, as I've said before, it makes it a little bit easier because of the, uh, it keeps everything in time nice and, you know, keep that 16th note thing, it keeps going. So, a little bit quicker. And a little bit quicker. Three, four, and. Now let's have a look at the second part, which sounds like this. Okay, so this one's quite a little bit easier than the, uh, than the first part. And we begin with the move that I showed you as the variation for the first lick in the first part, okay? So for this we have, uh, well, it sounds like this. Okay, so that's what we're going to be playing. We begin with open E, slapped. Then we have the muted palm slap. So we get that kind of whack. Then we bring the thumb down 
to uh, as a ghost note. Then we've got the D seventh fret of the G string. Okay, so um, for all of that, you want to be in position. So the first finger wants to be level with the seventh fret. Then, after the D, we bring the hand down again for the muted palm slap. Then, we bring the thumb down again for another ghost note. Oops. Okay, so that's the whole move. Okay. So this is very, very drum-like, you know, and, uh, like pretty much most of Mark King's uh, slap uh, lines. You know, he was a drummer before he was a bass player, and a lot of it is, you know, rudimentary kind of sounding stuff. Okay, so that's the first part. So you start slow. And just build up speed. After that lick, we play G and A. Okay, so third fret E string, fifth fret E string. So that sounds like this all together. After the G to A, we uh, play two ghost notes, and then we have this little slide there. Now, if you watch Mark King do this live, there's no real, you know, accuracy to it. You just stick a little slide in there, okay? So, um, all together, that sounds like this. So, I'm pretty much just moving up to around the C, D area. And then just sliding down. But if you really want to get into it, you can, you know, really slide the finger up and down. And I'm, um, well, I think I'm using the second finger for that. Let's just check. Yeah, I'm using the second finger for that. Don't know why, I just am. <laughs> so. Okay. Okay, so remember the two ghost notes in there. And then we've got that. Then finally, after the slide, we have this little run-up. So we, uh, we have ghost note, then F sharp, second fret of the E string, hammer on to the, uh, to the G there, third fret of the E string, ghost note, back to the F sharp. So. And then we just work up G, G sharp, A. So, with uh, the rest of the part. Okay. So, in order to get the timing correct, you just have to keep the thumb working. Again. Three, four. Three, four. And then three, four. Three, four. Oops, three, four. Okay, so you just build up speed. We finish that run up with a ghost note on the E string, and then we pop the A uh, seventh fret of the D string, and then the G fifth fret of the D string. So, so all together that sounds like this. So, now let's put both of those parts together. So slowly, it's going to sound like this. Two, and three, and four, and. Okay. 
Once you've got the feel for putting them both together at that tempo, just build up speed, okay? So let's take it a little bit quicker, but don't loop it, because if you loop it, you'll find it tough to put in the little variation that we need to add, uh, because on every single repeat, there's this variation, which I'll show you in a sec. But uh, first of all, just try those two riffs together. So let's try it a little quicker. Two and three and four and... and then stop. Don't loop it. So, a little bit quicker, two and three and four and. Okay, now let's try it at full speed. So, one, two, three, four. Okay, so that's all you want. One, two, three, four. Now, once you've played the riff through that first time, every repeat after that has this little variation at the beginning, which sounds like this. Okay, and that is played with the uh, doubles the snare in the uh, drum part. So. We need to learn this little lick first. So, this is very similar to what we learned for the opening lick in both parts. So we have... So, open E, then hammer on slap there, and then slap the ghost note. Then we have C sharp, sixth fret of the G string, and then D, seventh fret of the uh, G string. So. Okay, and each one of those wants to be fairly staccato and quite uh, sharp because it's doubling with that snare there. Oops. Okay, so just get that lick off and try it faster than you need to. You know, like I say, it's a very, very popular kind of line. So there's no harm in learning it faster than you need to because then you just slow it down when you need it for the bass line. So to add that lick to the riff, we need to work out where we're gonna be rhythmically. So we're gonna start the riff from that little lead up from the F sharp. Okay, so when we add it to that, we get this. So it's straight in after that, you know, the little, uh, the pops there on the A to the G. Okay, so that's the rhythm that we're looking for. So you just need to, you know, because, you know, we've got that kind of incessant kind of 16th note thing going, it, um, it, it does fall under the thumb quite easily, this, even though it is syncopated, so. So just play that in isolation. Okay, so then when you add it to the whole thing. Okay, so just get used to doing that first. Once you can add that lick to the end of the riff, we can just work back into the little chordal bit there. So to do that, the rhythm is going to be like this. Okay. So it's a different rhythm from the very first time that we played it, where we've got the open E coming straight back into the G. Okay, so with the whole uh, with the whole riff, three, four. Oops, three, four. Okay, so and round and round and round like that.
So once you're comfortable with that riff, then you can just try playing it round and round and round with the backing track. So I've sequenced up a few drum tracks for this just so that you've got something to practice to and you can download those from over at TalkingBass.net. Just follow the link in the info below. And um, uh, I've got it at several different tempos. So we've got 80 beats per minute, 90, 100, 110 and 120. So 120 is roughly around the uh, tempo that they recorded it at. So here it is at 80 beats per minute. Okay. So once you feel comfortable at 80 beats per minute, you can just move on up through the tempos. So to save time, let's just jump on up to 100 beats per minute and see how that sounds. Now let's jump on up to 120 beats per minute, which is pretty much the original tempo. So remember to like this video and subscribe to the YouTube channel to uh, keep up to date with all the weekly video releases. I normally release a video on a Friday. Also, check out TalkingBass.net for uh, hundreds more videos just like this one. Just follow the link in the info below. Okay, see you later.